listening to Zap Night, a video game review podcast. Join your hosts Danny, Kaylee, Seth, and Evan as we review video games from all systems and all genres. What's going on, Zappers? We are playing Kingdom Hearts 3, so we're going to be facing our fears. So don't think of twice about clicking no, away. Seth. Yes, it, <laughs> yeah. Some Utada right there. Any. <laughs> so yeah, we're talking finally about Kingdom Hearts 3, and as you can see, I can barely contain my excitement. We're not a month late. We're not, well, yeah, this 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 episode is we planned two it months out. in the making. We planned it out the whole time. We, yeah. This was totally no, planned. No, I didn't. <laughs> we, uh, so this was actually supposed to go up last month. Uh, we ran a little bit late, and we did Halo 2. Um, so believe it or not, actually, I think it was the day after it came out, or two days after, I had actually beaten it. <laughs> So, <laughs> if, to be honest, if I would have just sat down and played it a little bit more, may have may have hit the deadline, but it's like it, it's okay because now we got Halo Two out of the way. So, in other words, we should have thought twice about moving that date. I'm gonna keep making that joke. Was that a reference to a song? Yeah. What song? The credits song for Kingdom Hearts Three. Oh, I don't know that. Don't think twice. I didn't know that one. I had a name. I I don't know which name that was. That's pretty cool though. Thanks for that little reference some little trivia before we get into it you know <laughs> so kingdom hearts 3 this game was developed by square enix and it was released on the playstation 4 and the xbox one uh, it was released uh in late january of 2019 um and this game it's been about 14 years since kingdom hearts 2 so that's a long that's a lot of expectations that that went towards this game this game was really hyped up um Disregarding all the spinoffs that came out after two, because I believe the lot, the most recent like game that came out besides three was Dream Drop Distance, it was in 2012. So it really wasn't hasn't been that long since the Kingdom Hearts game, but in terms of main series, it has been over a decade. So um, that's still seven years. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, if you look at Final Fantasy, it's it kind of makes up for it a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, so this game when it got announced, it was it was really it was teased actually in 2013. Um, it was just a it was just seen it just had Sora walk on a beach, pick up a keyblade, look off into the sea, and then boom, Kingdom Hearts three. And then 2015, we actually got a trailer. Didn't you say that actually made it into the game? That that was it, the same scene. It was the it was literally the exact same. Only Sora was wearing his Kingdom Hearts three outfit, and the trailer he was just wearing his Kingdom Hearts two outfit. Um, but yeah, it, it made it into the game. Uh, same Keyblade that he picked up and everything. Um, the Ancient Keyblade. The Ancient Keyblade. It was actually Ericus's Keyblade, as I found out. And I feel like I should have oh, known. Oh, really? Yeah, because he used that. Why don't they explain that? <laughs> well, because I think most people who... The people who made this Square Enix, I'm pretty sure they figured that if you're playing this, you've played most of them. So they just imagine that you've played Birth by Sleep and you know who Ericus is already. Or you could be like me and or you can just start with your three, first one, and then yeah. you have no idea what's going on. Um, Needless but, to say, I had to have some things explained. Yeah, by your boy over here. By my, yeah. I, w- I mean, and I haven't even really been around for Kingdom Hearts too long. Um, I've been playing this game since like 2014. I think is when I first got one, and then I played two, liked two more, and then I eventually played all of them. But just in so in a span of you know, almost like six years, I've I've gotten to this game very well, like very much so. Um, but besides all that nonsense, we're gonna go ahead and get into the story. So <laughs> I, I want to go ahead and say before I get into this, if you've never played a Kingdom Hearts game before, um, you are going to have absolutely no idea what is going on. All you need to know is that Riku. That's all. That's it. That's, that's it. All that's you need all that to know happened. is that there's a boy. He he has this, and what is that? That's a that, for that, all the listeners out there. That is yeah. That that is the kingdom key. The keyblade. That is yeah. That is well. It's a kingdom key, but it is a keyblade. Yes, it is the default uh, keyblade you receive in the game. Yeah, when you think keyblade, you probably think of that. Because it's on... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, regarding Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, it opens up 
uh, with the final scenes of uh, Birth by Sleep 0.2, which was on the 2.8 collection. So you get, there's another game you have to buy if you actually want to get this story. Um, and it serves, this game is the conclusion of the, uh, the Dark Seeger saga. Um, so everything we've played up to this point, this is the, this is the end of that. Uh, and all the worlds featured in you the can game. Really, you can really tell that it is because, well, I'm not going to spoil your story, but it ends pretty nicely. Yeah, most of the worlds that are featured in this game um, are Disney properties. Um, and are some most of them are new to the series. Um, Kingdom of Corona, uh, San Francisco, Arendelle, and then Pixar got in here finally with uh, Toy Box, which is Toy Story, Monstropolis, which is Monsters Inc. And we got two original worlds: um, Final World, and I believe it's you pronounce it Scala and Salem, which is the uh, like the seat of power for Keyblade wielders, at least back in the day um, before the the Great Keyblade War. Um, and that's where the game's final battle ends up taking place. Um, and the only returning Disney worlds are Olympus, uh, the Caribbean from Pirates of the Caribbean, and 100 Acre Wood. Woods. That's, that's it. That's, that's all that came back. Um, but, well, not, I guess not really. Uh, Twilight Town did come back, kind of. You didn't really do much there. It was kind of more like a hub. Mm -hmm. um, was the Keyblade Graveyard in any other games? It was, yeah, it was, but you didn't, you didn't really get the free roam access like you did in this game. Uh, but it wasn't like Birth by Sleep, and you could actually get to the Keyblade Graveyard in, uh, in the Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, oh. where you could fight uh, Terra. Uh, but yeah, Twilight Town was in there, the Dark World, which we saw in uh, Birth by Sleep 0.2, and uh, the Land of Departures there, which is where Birth by Sleep starts, and of course the Keyblade Graveyard. Um, so after Xehanort returns, uh, Yensid um, begins preparing to uh, begin seven, training seven Keylade wielders to uh, kind of counteract Xehanort's plan to forge the. It's called they just call it the Keyblade, but the way it's sewn in yeah. subtitles is the X Blade. So I didn't if get I'm, that until I saw yeah. the So when I refer to the Keyblade, I'm just going to call it the X Blade. So you can, you know, it doesn't look like this. There's actually two of these on the X Blade. So keep that in mind. Um, using reconstituted Organization 13 members. So in Kingdom Hearts 2, we had Organization 13, and they were destroyed. Now we have a new Organization 13, which is consisting of the same members, um, just with a different plan. The original plan was to get was to get their own hearts. Now it's more just to help Xehanort, you know, become the almighty Keyblade dude. What was his goal? Xehanort's? Yeah. He wanted to uh, forge the uh, Keyblade to possess like the most powerful like Keyblade. He wanted to wield that power. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Sora, who in Dream Drop Distance, he almost got taken over by Xehanort. He lost his power of waking. He actually lost a lot of his strength. Um, so, Yensid sends him, as well as Donald Duck and Goofy, to kind of resume his travels across worlds, rebuild up his strength, and uh, get his power of waking back, which is the ability to restore lost hearts. Uh, meanwhile, Riku and King Mickey are traversing the realm of darkness to find Aqua, and Kairi and Lee, otherwise known as Axel, as most people know him from the other games, are being trained uh, to properly wield their own Keyblades that they now have. Um, during their travels, uh, Sora and Riku are contacted by Yenzo, who is, um, I believe his name is Zexian, when he was part of the organization. But he left the organization, got his own heart back, and he became who he was originally, Yenzo. Um, and he discovers that Ansem the Wise's research data, um, that Sora, in his heart, he has three hearts. He has, that technically has his own, but he also has Roxas, Ventus, and Shion. Um, Roxas is his nobody who we first meet in Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, Ventus is a Keyblade wielder from the past who connects his heart with Sora when his gets damaged, and Shion is a copy of Roxas that is made off of Sora's memories. Um, so Riku surmises that the organization's members from the past are using artificial human replicas um, created by Vex and another member um, to enable their existence in the present. That's, why, that's the only reason why they're here. Um, so Sora gets the idea to 
um, transfer Roxas' heart to a replica so he can come back and he can help with the fight. Um, the Heartless Ansem, there's a, I, okay, that's also an extra plane that I don't think they really talk about is there's two, there's, there's two Ansems. There's Ansem the Wise and then there's Heartless Ansem. Ansem the Wise is the actual researcher from the past. Heartless Ansem is the antagonist um, who is the Heartless of Xehanort. Uh, How you actually get to that from Ansem and Xehanort? Be, I don't know. Um, so Harlow Ansem enters the realm of darkness and kidnaps Ansem the Wise, who uh, he helps uh, rescue before sending a spare replica to the Enzo for Roxas to inhabit. Uh, Riku and Mickey eventually locate and battle the corrupted Aqua in the realm of darkness. Um, at the same time, Sora discovers Master Ericus's Keyblade on Destiny Islands and uses it to enter the the, uh, the Dark Realm. That's where that the trailer came from. Was when he uh, they get sent back to the Destiny Islands. They find his Keyblade in the sand and he uses that to finally get into the Realm of Darkness. Um, and that was pretty cool how they did that too. He drops in and lands next to him. On yeah, that ocean. I thought that was yeah. That was a really, that was really cool, cool battle too. Indeed. The negative aqua or whatever. Uh, dark. Yeah, it was just um, it was just a corrupted aqua. Darkwa. Darkwa. There we go. Um, so into dark realm and he exercises the darkness from aqua and returns it to the realm of light, and then they all follow her to Castle Oblivion, which is the setting of the Game Boy game Chain of Memories, and they find Ventus, who is still asleep. Who has been asleep since birth by sleep. So it's like ten years. He's been sleeping for ten years. Man, he must have hit snooze like he hit snooze a, a lot. lot. That's kind of he's gonna be late for something. Um, Vanitas comes back. Vanitas is was created by Xehanort after his uh, plan to corrupt Ventus failed. So he made Vanitas, and he looks like Sora for some reason. They're brothers. They're brothers. Yeah, he's really weird. Um, and then Sora rediscovers his power of waking, and he ends up reviving Ventus just in time. Um, for Ventus to save Aqua from being uh, pretty much killed by Vanitas. So then, finally, we have the seven Keyblade wielders who are ready to go off and fight Xehanort. Only, as soon as they get to the Keyblade graveyard, they instantly get consumed by, like, a tornado of Heartless. Hey, you remember uh, World of Light for Smash Bros.? Yeah. I drew a lot of parallels to that. Yeah. Like, everyone came there, they're like, oh, everyone's here. Everyone's here, and, and then they all get, and they all get yeah. wiped out. Yeah, right. even Sora. Even Sora, which he ends up waking up in this uh, kind of like a limbo realm, and it's called the Final World. And in the Final World, he has to put back the pieces, I think it was his heart. Yeah. Um, And once he you know, once he does that, he is guided back to the realm of light by Kairi, and then he uses his power of waking to revive all of his friends. Colors weave. <laughs> Returning moments, um, right before their initial defeat, they end up uh, stopping. Um, they end up stopping this tornado of Heartless and the Guardians Light, and they successfully destroy the organization members. In the process, Terra regains control of his body and reunites with Aqua and Ventus. Lee, Axel, reunites with Shion, and I believe Roxas. Yes, yeah. and Roxas. Um, they actually, so if you remember, they sent uh, Ienzo, the replica body. Just in time, they got Roxas into the replica, and they sent him. They got him to the Keyblade Graveyard just in time to uh, help Sora fight off whichever organization members he was fighting at that point. So then Roxas reunites with Axel and Shion, and everyone's happy. They hug, and they cry, and it's great. Very emotional. Very emotional moment. Even when the organization members were getting you know, killed off. Yeah. they. Uh, could- I would only known them for this game, and some of them were kind of really emotional. A lot of them... Because, you know, they're helping Xehanort, but when you actually defeat them, they talk about how, like, they just, they don't really seem to care about his plan. Like, they're just, they, like, they kind of mock him. I was him. just along for the ride. Yeah, I was just along for the ride. I don't, <laughs> I signed a contract. I don't, I don't know nothing. So I'm fine. legally obligated to be here. <laughs> so, after all the organization members are gone, the only person left is Xehanort. And he provokes Sora into attacking him so he can forge uh, the Keyblade. And the way he, uh provokes him is destroying Kyrie's body mm. yeah which is also a gut wrenching moment she has not had a good run this it series. was very uh, it's abrupt too I, <laughs> it, it just, wasn't sh- it just happened he just slashed her and like Sora was way down there trying to jump up there right 
So Sora, That's Donald, and Goofy, they use Xehanort's time travel ability against him, and they transport him to Scala and Salem um, to defeat him. Um, and then eventually the other Keyblade wielders. Everyone else joins them. And Ericus, as his heart emerges from Terra and convinces Xehanort to surrender, Xehanort succumbs to his old age, and then him and Ericus uh, d- depart to the final world. And then Sora and his friends use the, key- the uh, X-Blade to close it and then return to the Keyblade graveyard. So then... Once they're all back, everything's done, Sora decides to use his power of waking again to revive Kairi. Um, despite warnings from Mickey that if he keeps misusing this power, it could result in him losing his heart. But Sora promises to return, and, event- and it cuts to everyone, they're on the Destiny Islands, they're all having fun, and it pans over to Kairi and Sora sitting on the, you know, the memorable, the tree that's, you know, bent over, and they're, they're sitting there watching the sunset, holding hands. And she stays next to him as he fades away. Yeah, if you weren't crying at that point, you probably <laughs> that, that, were a heartless. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That one. I honestly did not think that was going to happen. I thought we were finally, everyone was finally happy, and then he just, yeah, sh- this is going to be such a happy ending, concluding the series, and then, but, but if you stay after the, the credits, um, we see Zigbar, who has been reincarnated into a Keyblade Master, or a Keyblade Apprentice, my bad, known as, uh, I think it was Lushu? L-U-X-U, how do you say that? Lushu or is it Luxu or something like that? I don't even know. That thing, look that up. You, you can search that if you don't know. And he begins to recount his actions to the foretellers. And Maleficent and Pete are kind of there, just kind of watching from afar. They were kind of just there the they whole story. They were there story, the whole story. They didn't, really, <laughs> they didn't really do anything. They were looking, looking for, for the, the black box. They were looking for the black box, which we finally see at the end. Um, Zigbar has it at his feet. When he's yeah. talking to the foretellers. And they're like, is it the dead man's chest? No. <laughs> no. Um, but then in a flashback, back to their youth, Ericus and Xehanort begin a new game of chess that predicts a battle between Sora, Lushu, the five foretellers, and the master of masters. So Sora isn't gone. As to how they're going to get him back, though. That's the mystery. Though, if you, I believe, if you beat the game on, like, hardcore mode or something like that, you get a secret kind of cutscene and it has Sora awakening in a New York esque city as well as Riku. Um now this could be And there's a couple new enemies there too. Right. This could be foreshadowing uh DLC as Square Enix uh said that they do plan to have DLC in the game. Or it could just be the the next you know a trailer for the next uh entry in the Kingdom Hearts series that would lead into this the new chapter for Kingdom Hearts. Because it looked very, very much like New York. And very looked, realistic. Yeah. I'm predicting that it's like a Marvel world or something. Yeah, that could... Um, Since that, Disney owns Marvel. And yeah. That very well uh, could be it. So, if you're still with us, <laughs> if, you, if you haven't been confused and you know what's going on, this story, the actual... like Now, if you've played Kingdom Hearts, you know that there's the story, the main story, and then there's the little side story they have within each world. Now, the main story for, for this game, following, you know, Organization 13, saying or Sora attempt to stop him, that was well. That, that, didn't, that, was, that was good. I did enjoy that. What didn't do much justice for me was the stories for each world. Either they were the exact same as their movies, uh, mainly Tangled, um, Frozen. Any of the Disney, yeah, purely all, Disney <coughs> worlds has followed the plot of their movies. Yeah, the Pixar and, ones actually came up with their own stories, right? So, um, which was cool. So yeah, but so a lot of so because the, there was more, oh, there's a lot of just Disney, like, and they just followed their their normal plot lines. I didn't like that, and they had done that somewhat in the past. Though there was always like a a change, especially Kingdom Hearts one. Um, they obviously like a lot of the worlds. They were still following their movies. But they did a better job of incorporating it into the Kingdom Hearts like universe. As well in this game, it was pretty much more like it was so like in the Frozen world, it was more like, oh, it's just frozen. Just imagine there's just imagine Sora's there. You know, there's no added Kingdom Hearts elements into it. It's just the story, the, the frozen story with yeah. Sora. As you can tell by the the way he told the whole story of the game kind of glossed over the Disney worlds, but that's just because they're kind of there. They, were, they didn't really matter yeah, that much they, to the story. <laughs> they, I, I'm not gonna, like, 
always when I talk about Kingdom Hearts too, like I'm always gonna talk about how much I love like the Land of Dragons, or um, I th- uh, think it was when you go back in time and you have like everything's like old like movie style graphics. Like I always talk about those worlds. This one there really wasn't any worlds that at least in terms of the like the Disney worlds, which is what this which is what all the other games have been based on. They didn't stick with me that much, I and mean, that was really disappointing. The Pixar worlds it did were, a little more. They did a little bit more. Um, the uh, they toys actually th- had the heroes of those worlds actually confronting the indeed. Well, they had that members, yeah. which is the first. Usually, in most of the worlds and all the other games, the antagonist of said world is usually the antagonist of the movie. Um, while in while they did have that in Kingdom Hearts three, there was like the antagonist for the you know that that movie. But there's also the organization member who was manipulating what was going on. Um, so that was kind of cool. But the Pixar worlds were cool because they they did they were not just retelling the movie. Uh, Toy Story. It was in between Toy Stories. I believe it was two and three. Yeah, it was really cool because yeah. you know, growing up watching all these Disney films and then seeing them do more with it. It's like great. Showing oh, yeah. Buzz and Woody's connection and I love it. Because Sora's, you know, powered up through his friends, mm-hmm. and to see him confronting, what was it, Xehanort? It was Xehanort, right? It was young Xehanort, yeah. 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 Um, so it, it was, was pretty funny. It was he pretty cool. Him. <laughs> I honestly thought Woody was about to, like, I thought he was going to go, yeah, he was holding <laughs> he was, Buzz captive. He was mad. I thought Woody was going to, like, man, <laughs> oh, man go crazy. all deputy on him, you know? Right. Uh, San Francisco, that one as well. Uh, that's that Big Hero one. 6. That one takes place immediately following the movie Big Hero 6, which is really cool. Um, Monstropolis, Monsters Inc. It takes place immediately following the original Monsters Inc. movie, um, and it was just it was it was really cool. Um, the stories for them were okay. Um, I think it was for me it was just more cool just to ha- be there and just be able to fight alongside you know Woody and Buzz and you know Mike and Sully. Yeah, it was it was just cool more than the story did for me, but it was still just- cool. I like how the Pixar worlds actually incorporated the organization members more. Yeah. Actually had them, you know, do something with them. Like, at the end of the Monsters, Inc. one, when Vanita shows up and is about to, like, you know, take Sora out, mm-hmm. he just grabs him and throws him in a door and shreds just the just door. Shred the door, yeah. That was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. But, yeah, so story-wise, this, for the main Kingdom Hearts stories, yeah, it was really good. I, it was, it was good. I, still think i like kingdom hearts 2 better but um to conclude the series it did a good job it did wrap up a lot of stuff right i ended up giving it a seven out of ten i gave it a nine give it a nine because even though it was very very confusing and i had to have you explain a lot of what (laughs) happened before to me it was very emotional for a lot of reasons right it was almost too emotional too emotional? There was never this much emotion in any other Kingdom Hearts game. I wonder if that's just the nostalgia that built up over all those years. Maybe. I don't know. It was... There was like a... There was like a supposed to be like a big emotional moment in like every single world we went to. There was like that one moment where Sora like falls on his knees and cries. And I was just talking about this earlier with Danny like, like you know, 20 minutes ago. We were talking about... I think we were talking about Hope. From Final Fantasy 13, and I hate him because every single like every single cutscene, he like falls on his knees and cries. Like if that was his like special ability, like his like final <laughs> like form, his final form would be him on his knees crying. <laughs> so yeah, so it's just there's a lot of just emotional moments, and there really didn't need to be. It's like oh, we get it, you know, everything's sad, you know, but I mean we've been through this before. It's not as sad as I'm sure they're making it out to be. There's just a lot of emotional moments, but that wasn't the... I didn't have... My biggest problems wasn't with that. So you give it a nine? Yeah. Solid. Graphics. This game looks amazing. This is In terms of Kingdom Hearts games, this is the best looking Kingdom Hearts game. Yeah, the by far. cutscenes flow right into the uh, gameplay. Right. They're and all the same graphics, and they all look like they're straight out of the movies. Even the Pirates of the Caribbean world. Pirates of the Caribbean. Which oh, is man. real. That's real it stuff. Looked, yeah, it looks it looks great. And the Pixar worlds, especially, because I believe this was animated using, uh, this was animated by Pixar Animation Studios. They animated this. So, especially for the Pixar worlds, I mean, it it worked much better. And, of course, uh, the Caribbean looked 
at its best. Um, there's a lot of cool things that they did with this now that they could. One was um, right, right as you're about to fight or you regain control of Sora, instead of it fading to black and then fading back in, you take control, it just transitions. Like uninterrupted, just transitions into Sora and you're good to go. You don't have to wait. No black screen, just goes right in there, and that's really cool. Um, obviously, yeah, like the cutscenes don't differ from, you know, main gameplay. So, and especially with like, you know, Square Enix have always showed us these amazing cutscenes, you know, whether it's in the beginning and the end. And then, you know, it goes to like, especially with the first Kingdom Hearts, you know, you have this really amazing looking opening, and then it goes to like PS2 graphics, and it's like, ugh. Yeah, that was one cool thing I noticed in 3, is that they'd like have flashbacks where they'd have pictures from the previous games, and they'd be in those graphics. Yeah, they'd be in those they graphics. They didn't like remaster those no. or anything. And I think that cool. was cool. It showed the evolution yeah. of the games, and I thought that was really neat. I recently picked up 358 over two days, and I was surprised that they were able to put like PS2 graphics on a DS for the cutscenes. Speaking of that, so it's actually, I was like talking about it, and it's actually, it's supposed to be pronounced 358 over two. I'm going to say it how yeah, I say it. It's, it's, easy, it's just easier in sense just to say 358 over two days, not 358 over two days. Yeah. I used to call it 358 divided by two, because that's what it looked like. I think that's what Jaden called it, and he had played it and I didn't have it, so I just went by what he said. Um, but graphics-wise, yeah, this game looks great. I gave it a 9. I did too. The only problem I had was that sometimes the mouth sync was off. Yeah, uh, mouth sync was off. it wasn't that bad. Um, there would be quite a bit of slowdown at some point. I don't know if that's just the Xbox, because we played the Xbox version. Um, but <laughs> don't, don't, don't leave angry comments about us playing the Xbox version. Oh, there, what if it's the disc replay girl? She just comes back and mocks you for playing on the Xbox. Like, oh my gosh, they're talking about me on the podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this game graphically looks great. That was probably its best, in my opinion, that was probably its best quality was its graphics. Yeah. The voice actors, though. The voice actors, though. That was not its good quality. Honestly, it was very... I mean, for like the Disney worlds, some of the Pixar worlds, some of them, the voice actors... The voice actresses, they came back. But we we didn't have a lot of the big ones. Uh, Mike and Sully were voiced by different people. Uh, Buzz and Woody. Um, Phil from Olympus. Di- uh, they didn't even get... They like they didn't even replace him with anyone. They, he just didn't have a voice. Because Danny DeVito, he voices Phil. So instead of just replacing him, they just, just didn't give him a voice. It would be a lot of voice actors to get back, though. It would. But that was the thing about Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. There was so much voice acting. There were so many... like characters that were being blended in and they had all the original voice um they had all the original voice actors yeah um so it's that's that was also disappointing but i mean i put it to the side even when the ones that were really obnoxious um w- uh, woody was actually voiced by uh tom hank's brother and he sounds like him but sometimes he, sometimes but he he it literally sounds like he's reading off of a script like so it sounds so as opposed to like, you know, just kind of a fluent, just kind of talking. It literally sounds like he's like looking at his paper and like, like, yeah, Sora, we will get him. You know, it's like, it's, it was, <laughs> he always was kind of robotic though, especially in the first movie what, before he like, I don't know. know. That might just be me, but I don't know. I noticed it. And so voice actor wise, yeah, that wasn't really. Some of them were really good though. Like, I know they didn't get Johnny Depp back, no. but. They never know. They oh, he was never. He for never Jack voiced. Sparrow, it sounded sound like Jack Sparrow, yeah. and Buzz didn't sound all that different to me either. Yeah, I think Pirates of the Caribbean and and because it, it debuted in uh, Kingdom Hearts two, and both Kingdom Hearts two and Kingdom Hearts three, none of the voice actors were the people who played in the movie. They were, they were someone else. What about Mutton Chops? That might have been. Oh, you're talking about Gibbs? Yeah. <laughs> that might have name. been. But I mean, I don't know. I didn't look at the, the 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 cast list too much. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So voice actors, whatever. Gameplay. This to me was the game's most disappointing um, aspect. Um. It introduced one new combat element, and that was attractions. And attractions are cool. It's like you can they bring it like. Sora summons like roller coaster rides or just rides you'd see at like a Disney park. 
like a pirate ship that kind of swings and there's water or like a the water ride where you spin the thing and it spins your boat around that was cool but that was the the hardest one the carousel (laughs) the carousel that one can that one's that one's it's that one's all about timing you have to time it and i and i'm i'm okay with timing but that one was weird like even you have to like wait for a blue thing to expand so it gets to an outer circle and you have to hit a or x at like the right time yeah it's definitely not guitar hero yeah it's not guitar hero it's it's bad maybe they should have played a little bit more of that game before when they were so they could get out more inspiration yeah, more i influence. did notice that they threw in a lot for this game like like the mech assault you know that's was in toy story level uh you get in this big toy mech and it was a lot like that game it reminded me a lot of mech assault yeah they throw in they, they th- with th- these different worlds they threw in a lot of different things that like kind of draw inspiration from other games right um but in terms of the main, the 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 the, the true Kingdom Hearts combat, all they added was attractions. Um, everything else they introduced, everything came back. So flow motion, um, that finally made its debut on a on a main Kingdom Hearts game. But it was in Dream Drop Distance, and it was in Birth by Sleep 0.2. Um, being able to like fly, pretty much, that was introduced, I believe, in the PSP game Birth by Sleep, the original one. So, um, and I was kind of looking forward to because something that they do with every Kingdom Hearts game is introduce a new, um, like, a few new elements for your combat. Um, but they didn't really do that. They literally just added attractions, like, um, like limit breaks, um, like, finishers. Those all came back, but they weren't new. Um, and I was really disappointed with that because, I mean, while attractions are cool, they sometimes are worthless. Sometimes you get them and your enemy is nowhere nearby. So you're just using your your attraction and nothing is taking damage. So you're just wasting time. Um, and then it might take a while for you to get another one. Um, so I was I was thoroughly disappointed with uh, a lot of the uh, the com a lot of the combat um, elements that they decided not to do. They did though bring back um, a lot of abilities, like in terms of like. It, Stuff you can use to fill up your AP that were pretty cool. Um, gliding came back, which is the ability just to pretty much indefinitely just fly, um, which is cool. And you slightly kind of like um down, but yeah, you never I hit didn't the ground. Know you, you could, could do yeah, you could always fly. Um, they did. They added a lot of stuff that were just for traversing, like the map. Oh, uh, you can finally run up walls. We've always seen in cutscenes how you can just run up. Like here's will just run up a wall. This time you can actually just do that by yourself. You can just run up a wall, and it's great. Um, well, even going back to what I said about how it drew inspiration for other games, like in the Big Hero Six world, like that was fully like open for you to run around in. You can run up like all these buildings and stuff. Kind of remind me of. uh, I noticed that with the Olympus world too. Spider Man, honestly, Spider Man PS4. Spider Man PS4. (laughs) And the Pirates of the Caribbean world was a lot like Assassin's Creed, Black Flag. Black Flag, yeah. Um. Yeah, but they, so they added yeah, so they added a lot of abilities that, like I said, they did come back. But they a lot just for traversing, you know, map or whether it's climbing, flying. They had this thing, I believe it was just where you could just kind of get a, a quick boost of, um, like speed, like you could just boost forward real quick. If you were in it the air, it was like Sonic's. Yeah, <laughs> spin um, dash. If you were on, so if you were on the ground and you moved your uh, analog stick in a direction pressed, uh, whether you were playing on, you know. If you were pressing square or X, depending on what you were playing on, you would just do a dodge roll. That was something I'm glad came back was dodge roll. In King Hearts 2, there was no dodge roll. Really? Yeah, no. How no, did you even live? No rolling. Um, How did uh, you dodge? There was, there was some other stuff you could do. Uh, you could fly, so I would just fly around. Um, you could yeah, go so, on your skateboard. <laughs> just go on your skateboard. Yeah, you could. so you could dodge roll. That came back. They had this thing, yeah, but so you could kind of just get a boost of air if you were in the air and you moved your direction, you know, your analog stick and you pressed... Uh, square or X, you could just kind of boost forward in the air. And you could stack that ability to, uh, you know, stay up for longer, do it quicker. And it actually reminded me a lot of um, this game, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, which is like one of my favorite Tony Hawk games. And they had this move called air shuffling. And what you could do is you could indefinitely just keep doing flip tricks in the air to stay in the air. So if you, you know, you got high in the air, you could just you know, just keep tricking, 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 and you could get like you know two billion points, just doing that for like ten minutes. 
when he'd get the speed boosts in the air, it always just reminded me of Sonic. Just Sonic? Oh, yeah, just Sonic Adventure, especially. Just, like, you know, jump, and then you jump again, and you just go forward. Yeah, but at least with Sonic, you know, it's not... You don't have to keep pressing X. You'll just... With Sonic, you'll just yeah. go, no matter There's what. There's also the... Rail grinding too, which is yeah, a lot like Sonic. That reminded me more of, uh, yeah, Sonic. You could like grind rails, but the way they actually did it, um, like the way it looked, reminded me a lot of Infamous, where you can get the ability to use your electricity powers and you could ride on uh, like railroad tracks to get by faster. It reminded me a lot of that because that's what it kind of looked like they're doing. They would like glow blue, and they would like kind of spark up whatever they were riding, and then they would just ride along that. So it was really cool. Um, I just wish they would have used a little bit more innovation in terms of elements. I mean, I mean, we saw attractions at the uh, 2015 trailer, and that was really cool. They were on a roller coaster, and then they were on a pirate ship, and I was like, "Wow!" And it was it was cool when you actually did it in like if you were, you know, fighting, and then you got it. That'd be cool. But sometimes fights last so long, you end up doing the same attraction like three times. And you can access your finish at any time. So even if you're at the tail end, you don't even have to do, you don't even have to keep tapping A or whatever to keep going. You can just hit Y immediately and or triangle and just do your finisher right off the bat. So attractions were cool. To begin with, they were cool looking. But then as the game goes, it's just kind of like, eh. Yeah. To me, though, it was just kind of, eh. Um, so I ended up giving gameplay a five. Yeah, I gave it a seven. Yeah. Oh, one more thing about the gameplay before we move on. I know this is a section that you really had some words about. The gummy ship. Oh my gosh. This thing sucks. And I thought Kingdom Hearts 2 was kind of meh. This was horrible. Kingdom Hearts 1, you know, you can't... So Kingdom Hearts 3, it's like it's like no man's sky yeah you exactly you can just fly wherever. around wherever you have full control Kingdom Hearts then one the battle scenes come and you're restricted yeah one thing they did was add a lot of annoying boss fights right as you got to world so you would fly you'd have to fly to the world and as you were like you know maybe a, you know really close to it right before it, it gives you the option oh do you want to land here you would have a boss fight that you'd have to get by and it was just so unnecessary and I only used High Wind Level 1, which is the base um, gummy ship, because I couldn't find the blueprints for the other gummy ships. With Kingdom Hearts 2, you, you got blueprints by beating, by using, you know, by going through each gummy ship, you know, mission every time you were going to Worlds. Every time you would complete one, they would give you a new blueprint, so you could constantly upgrade your, uh, your gummy ship. In this game, I believe you had to find them, or you had to craft them using, like, a workbench or something. And I, like, I didn't find any like parts so i had i was stuck with just the base gummy ship which didn't have that much health wasn't that powerful with attacks yeah it was like pew, 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 so i mean you would <laughs> you know you'd be in a boss fight for like you know it could be like 20 minutes and you know the game intended you to have a higher level gummy ship so you're kind of you know it's like oh this will take you you know three maybe four minutes no it took me like 15 minutes especially the one right at the end the last yeah, gummy lot, ship boss a fight a lot of barrel rolls came uh, out of yeah. that yeah you're constantly you have to you have to, it's all about timing. You have to mash. You have to you know mash your fire button. Then you have to start mashing X. So you just start you know aerial dodging from all the time, missiles and lasers and stuff like that. And it was just bad. At least with Kingdom Hearts two, um, you know you could. It was still kind of annoying, um, but you uh, you didn't you weren't restricted. With Kingdom Hearts three, yeah, you could fly around. But once you got into those boss fights, you didn't have as much. You just pretty much had a box, just avoid lasers and take down like eight bars of health, and yeah. then you win. So it was just really unnecessary. So yeah, this is. I never really cared for the gummy ship portions of each game, but this one by far is the worst. <laughs> I, I hated the gummy ship so much, and I never really liked it to begin with. So this just gave it give me more. It did kind of kill the flow. Yeah, this honestly. one. Honestly, yeah, it just gave me more reason to not like the gummy ship. Even though, I mean, it's still cool because it's, oh, we can get from world to world. And it's like, oh, cool. The organization members just have to open up a portal and they can just walk through. Yeah. <laughs> we have to go in a ship. So, yeah, I didn't really, it was, it was bad. But, yeah, screw the game ship. <laughs> music. This game's music was decent. 
I do like they reworked a lot of the old tracks to make them more orchestral, and that was really cool. Um, its main theme, Face My Fears, was, you know, brought back, can't be taught, it came back with Skrillex. Yeah, so if you're wondering why they didn't get as many uh, voice actors back, they spent the whole budget oh, on Oh, yeah, it's the whole budget. You, yes, yeah, so, so Utah and Skrillex. Um, and it's okay. Face My Fears is okay. It's way more electronic. Honestly, I kind of like Don't Think Twice Better. It's only Utah. Yeah, I... And it yeah. sounds way more, but, in yeah. my opinion, beautiful. Yeah. Um, I haven't really heard it in a while. I think I only heard it the one, like, the twice we saw the the ending do you want me to sing you a verse no you can stop okay (laughs) um no but um it was just really electronic and i didn't really like it i my sanctuary which is the theme for kingdom hearts 2 i love that one it's it has elements of like alternative rock as well as like shoegaze fantasy um some j-pop but like not too much and it it was great i mean there's a reason why a lot of people consider sanctuary to be one of the best uh, like video game themes ever. Um, Didn't they have an orchestrated uh, simple and clean in three? Yeah, well, that yeah, that wasn't for that wasn't just for three. The, um, that's been around for that's been around since like Dream Drop Distance, I believe. Oh, um, but yeah, that's really cool too. Simple and clean, which is a very J-pop song, especially in its in Kingdom Hearts one. It was very early two thousands pop. That's what yeah, it, it sounds was. Like. It was two thousand two. And that's it. Sounded like two thousand two. So, away. <laughs> simple and clean is the way. Anyway, I, I can't <laughs> sing. Uh, but yeah, as for face my fears, it was it was good, but it wasn't like I would much rather listen to the Sanctuary and Simple and Clean than I would face my fears. And it's not just Skrillex; it's just way too like electronic. Like electronic. When I say electronic, it's like what was popular like in like two thousand twelve. To like 2014 you know the whole dubstep era Which, of music honestly is probably when they made the song <laughs> probably it was probably one of the first things they worked on but yeah i mean it, i think i heard that it took them an hour to write fight face my fears mm-hmm. yeah but an like, hour yeah but every other song like songs that you just hear when like if you're just running around a world they were very nice i really liked them it was I much more they weren't really that memorable like none of them really got like stuck in my head with a lot of a lot of other video game music where it's just the overworld, you know. Yeah. That usually they try to put a little more effort in that. But. I well, what I liked about each world is that it would it would be like that world's like music, so like the Pirates of the Caribbean music. Oh, I did. It like, would be Pirates of the Caribbean music, me. but but it would have a Kingdom Hearts touch to it, which is like the more orchestral kind of stuff. So if you're blending Pirates of the Caribbean, which is kind of like, you know, you know, you, you put, you know, you kind of slow it down, kind of make it more sweet sounding and you get like a Kingdom Hearts kind of vibe to it. It it sounded nice. I really did like it. Um, Yeah. Yeah. They, you got a friend in me. The court, you had to have that. If they didn't have that, yeah. that, that would have been, that would have been really disappointing. But I'm not saying all the background music was bad. It, it was just, none of them really stuck with me. It wasn't bad. It was, um... It was nice. It didn't make me like I didn't I didn't listen to it and think like what am I listening to? I listened to it. I was like oh okay chill you know. It was it was nice. It, it was like every other Kingdom Hearts game you know. It the was, battle themes were pretty good though. Um, I did like those. Right. One song actually that sticked with me throughout every single Kingdom Hearts game is the song for Traverse Town. Traverse Town is really only in Kingdom Hearts one and I believe uh, Dream Drop Distance, but it's just the song that plays. I always remember that because it's the first world you go to. Um, I see Destiny Islands, but the, like the first world that you actually go to is Traverse Town. And I just remember that that tune. Oh, I do like the Twilight Town music. Twilight Town, yeah. Um, I was I was actually happy that stayed from Kingdom Hearts too. Um, it was it, it sounded a little bit different just because different new game, so they kind of reworked it, but it it still sounded really good. I ended up giving music a seven. I gave it a five. You gave it a five, but there's a very good reason for that because. We can't talk about music without talking about the most musical level in the game, Frozen. Yeah, they, uh, so with Frozen being a just retelling the movie, of course, she sang Let It Go to its entirety. And I've never, I've, I've kept myself from actually watching Frozen, but I could not escape Let It Go. It was, it was, it just blew up. And that song annoys me. It just annoys me. When yeah. I first heard it, I was like, uh, it's okay. I can see why people like it. 
I didn't like it, but I could say people like it. Now it just annoys me. So when they saw that, I mean, I was even with Sora, at least with like in Kingdom Hearts 2, the Little Mermaid levels, Sora's like dancing and singing as a merman, you know, just having a good time. <laughs> at least with this one, at least he looked confused. So, I mean, I could relate to him there. He was yeah. like, you know, you look at him, he's like, oh, you know. So that was that was yeah. only yeah. They not s- only do I think that Frozen's kind of an overrated movie. Um, I think it's just a bad movie. Yeah, <laughs> sorry if you, if you guys like Frozen. Sorry, I just don't. I just it kind of was just the worst world in the game in my <laughs> opinion. Because not only did it really not flow or do anything with the story overall, it kind of had you doing the same thing over and over again going up the mountain up the mountain yeah it was, it, it was just bad like you had to you went up the mountain three times finally you don't even go into the town you go up the mountain you're always on the mountain and then finally you're on like the lake and then you fight a wolf for some reason you fight a wolf that's don't even get to meet the villain of the movie yeah you just he just turns into a wolf yeah he doesn't even talk yeah yeah he just he's just about to stab and then there's a theory that they were gonna do more with that level but Disney kind of wanted him to fit a certain guideline oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure yeah so well it could have been good but that was my least favorite level honestly yeah um and it wasn't i even like tangled music better. yeah even tangled I, was better. i never seen tangled i kind of liked it i thought it was pretty good um as for frozen that world was called arendelle yeah no that one was that one was bad do you want to build a snowman do you wanna build yeah and no one teams up with you either from the main cast it's this weird snow monster yeah, well, yeah, you never... All the other levels, you team up with the protagonist, right? Yeah, I guess in the movie, I guess there's like a snow monster that defends... Yeah, but he's not a main character. Yeah, but then he ends up being part of your party, and you can fight alongside him, which is weird. You didn't get to fight with the snowman, what was his name? Olaf. Olaf. Um, I hate Olaf. The, the, the sister of the the person who had the ice Anna, powers. Elsa. Yeah. I don't know any of these names, by the way. I had sisters. Or sisters. I have sisters, rather. Who? <laughs> you had sisters. <laughs> what happened? I also froze them all, you know? And then sing uh, Let It Go. Dang. Yeah, at least it's like, I tangled, you know? It was, like, you know, I'm never going to forget Flynn Rider after playing through that. Yeah, he really was he's, the Han Solo of the movie. He is something. Um, But, yeah, musically, it was just kind of... It was it was Kingdom it was a it was a decent it was a, it was good for Kingdom Hearts, though I will I would you know, the Kingdom Hearts two soundtrack is still going to be played in its entirety at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the final Xehanort battle theme was that one was that good. was amazing that was good whatever song it was that threw in the um, when you first start up the game and it's playing that little piano solo oh dearly beloved. That's what it's called? Yes. Whatever song played towards the end and like fully orchestrated that, that was amazing. That was amazing. I Did think it? it was when Sora was riding the Keyblades. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah. In the, in the <laughs> battle, talk about that. in the battle where you're fighting the tornado of like Heartless, you're on a, you're on a Keyblade because it's a Keyblade graveyard and a bunch of key, you use a bunch of Keyblades you're riding and you use all those Keyblades to attack. And what you do is you press whether you have triangle or Y to actually attack. And on the side is each attack's name, and it's the name of, uh, it's a profile name for people who had played um, the mobile game, Kingdom yeah, Hearts Union Cross. it was Union like a sweepstakes Cross. they did. Yeah. They're like, do this and you'll be in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, so at first I thought it was just normal names, but then I started seeing like usernames. Yeah, and like I was like, oh Greg. wow. I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. Like they actually... Uh, <laughs> Greg, Zombie Slayer 69. Yeah, if I would have thought about that, I would have I would have loved to have E. Dunkles in... Uh, in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, that would have been cool. That would have been awesome. Should have done Zap Night. Zap Night Gaming in <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3. Check out the Gaming Podcast Alliance. The Gaming Podcast Alliance. Yeah, just get everyone. Every single, there. yeah, every person, yeah. every uh, group in the Gaming Podcast Alliance, they, uh, they're, you can use them. They, everyone has a Keyblade. This is ours. Yeah. This is our Keyblade. I keep hitting my microphone. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. I, I completely forgot to talk about that. That was cool. You should buy the game and check it out. Don't uh, Think Twice was a very good ending theme after seeing Sora get thanos Faced. Yeah, that was that was so sad. Yeah. He's only he's only he's only a boy. I know. He's only like 15. So. Actually, something I want to talk about with Sora and Kyrie. There was so much like awkward 
like sexual tension. It was. It wasn't it was just weird. with him and her too. It was like Axel and her as well, no, especially no. when they were no. Lee. So Axel in this game was just weird. Like every single time you saw him talk to someone, he would have these weird like flash, not really flashback, but kind of just like a flash, and it would be Shion or Roxas, and he looked like he was like very like unstable, like he just couldn't. Like he couldn't go on without him. Like he like he wasn't like operating very well. And then they don't go back to it. They they never like go back to that. And then all of a sudden, oh hey, Roxas and Shion are back. All right, you should be fine now. You don't gotta take any of those antidepressants anymore. <laughs> but yeah, with between Sora and Kyrie, it was just weird. Like it was just awkward. And there's always been like you know that's like it's always like oh they like each other. In this game, they embraced it and they didn't have to. It was just weird. They would stare at each other just like. <laughs> and it was weird the one thing that I thought was cool was uh, right before the final battle they're all on Destiny Islands and they give each other the pow pew fruit which is the um, like the star shaped fruit that um, we saw in the first game uh, Riku was talking about like you're about to like go off on adventure and they have to like they're doing this competition and Riku's like whoever wins gets to share the pow pew fruit with Kairi because like apparently this fruit when you, like if you share it with someone they uh, your destiny has become like entwined forever or something like that um and in the secret place which is like a rock like some like you know ex like cave Disney Islands, uh there uh Kyrie and Sora had drawn on their chalk um each other giving each other the fruit and so they actually did it in this game so that was cool um but it was just so awkward because it was just they're constantly it would be like a shot from behind them staring at each other smiling holding hands with the sun and then it just Faded to black. I remember seeing all these theories before the game came out, like, is Sora and Kyrie finally gonna kiss? And it was like, they're like 15. And it's like, they're not gonna put that in the game. If there's if they do, then it's like, then it's just even worse. And it's just like, you know. It would it would, it would just not it would just be weird. But they I wouldn't have minded. <laughs> it kind of probably would have wrapped things up a little nicer. Yeah. Well made it way more even more emotional when Sora, you know. Past the like, key you know. Yeah, that was really sad. And, and I, I that would have been the perfect thing to just kiss her and then fade away. It's a Disney That's thing. a little too dramatic. Come on. <laughs> it's D- Disney. Disney's not that smooth. Come on now. This is Disney we're talking about. He's been to so many worlds yeah. where so many happy endings have happened. In every and single game, trying one. to find her, and he doesn't, he doesn't get nothing. What happens? He dissolves. Thanos, he snapped. Yeah, that's, that's actually probably what happened, you know. Marvel Ooh, World coming. You know what? That would be kind of cool if, like, they timed that up really nice. It would kind of <laughs> screw up the ending of the story. But... Oh, yeah, it would. But, I mean, <laughs> hey, man, it's Disney. You know, they don't care. Um, so, overall, um, overall, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I gave it an 8. Give it an 8. Um, which for... I didn't have <laughs> higher standards, I guess, because I haven't played You haven't the played ones. any other ones, yeah. I am collecting them though. Yeah, you are. You are working. Gonna catch up on them. Well, good luck. (laughs) (laughs) Um, now when I beat this game, I think I had like over thirty hours. I believe like thirty-two total. How much did you have? Like almost twenty. Almost twenty. Because I put it on the beginner mode. He put on beginner mode, and when we started the game, I was just playing it, and he was like watching. Like we would. Yeah, I didn't have watching. my copy. He yet. didn't have a copy yet, so when got, I got my copy, I put it on beginner and caught up, skipping the cutscenes. Yeah, that he could skip cutscenes he saw. So, and yeah, a lot of the game's hours come from the cutscenes, actually. Yeah, I and that's found out. that's how it was with most with all the, with most of the other games. Like At Twilight least, Town section, if you don't do the cutscenes, it's like you're missing five minutes. so much. Uh, you don't get, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, oh, why is, why is the Remy here from Ratatouille? Like, and it's like, what's going on here? Why do I get the cook within that? I don't like that. Um, so it was, it was pretty good. Um, I gave it a 35 out of 50. You gave it 38 out of 38. 50. That's an 88. Is that correct? What? No. No. 38 plus 35. 38 plus 35. That's. Did I mess up my math? What did I do yeah. wrong? What what did you what was the? It'd be seventy three. Seventy three. Cause I had thirty five. You had thirty eight. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how I got eighty eight. That's I don't know what happened there. What <laughs> happened? So what was it then? Seventy three. Seventy three. If 73? I'm doing my math right, that's, I think I am. That's a low C. Um. So yeah, 
it was this game's worth it. I probably won't pick it up and play it through again unless I really have to. I do like it, um, but it was it was kind of just a meh, just a down the middle. Half, I, you know, I I like it, but it wasn't what I was. Uh, I don't think what a lot of people was hoping it was gonna be. Yeah, I have no idea what they're gonna do for DLC. I I have no I honestly I think they might take like a Sonic Unleashed route and just add adventure kind of fun stuff where you can just defeat like fight a bunch of just boss or something like that. Or maybe they'll it'll be story DLC, which yeah, I well, hope they don't they do, do that. that because yeah, I hope you know, they don't so do that because I don't want to pay another fifteen dollars to get the real ending. Like I would rather oh for ten bucks you can uh you can just fight more bosses. Like okay, I mean I'm still not gonna buy that, but at least you're not trying to you know give me a. I wouldn't mind if they like threw in more Disney worlds or anything and just said like oh it's not canon just go have yeah fun. just go have fun you know here's they bring back you know some of the other you know Disney inspired worlds yeah so. like maybe make a Wally Cars you know they <laughs> missed out on 14 years of I Disney know, stuff I know they missed out on so much and they were trying to put Star Wars into it. But they, um, they couldn't get it in time. Well, they might for the DLC. They might, they might, but they didn't. Actually, no, they. Uh, I don't know if you really call it. During the Toy Story world, they had that trailer for like a game that kind of looked like they were using lasers, but it wasn't really lightsabers, but it was kind of like laser swords. Wasn't that like Final Fantasy fifteen inspired or something? It looked like that's what I thought it was. Okay, actually, this is really funny because it got me, and I'm pretty sure it got you too. So when you go into the Toy oh, Story yeah. world, they play this like it's a whole totally different game. Um. And like you, so you see this whole like trailer, and then it zooms out, and it shows like you know whatever the name of the game is. And I literally thought that in the middle of their game, they just like showed off a new game. And I was like, because it had the Square Enix logo I, and everything. Yeah, so I was it like, like a trailer I was like, for a new game. I was like, you dirtbags, that is so messed up. And, and then it zooms, zooms out. out. It's a TV. It's a TV. In the Toy Story. World, and the to- and they're like, watching okay, it. Okay. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> that's fine. I almost I got so <laughs> upset. And then I was like, okay, that was a good that marketing was good. campaign right there. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been such a dirt that would have been so dirty to do <laughs> so yep that's kingdom hearts for you uh thank you guys so much for watching make sure you guys go to gaming podcast alliance um check out everyone else who is part of that um their links are on the website so you guys can go check them out see what they're doing um I believe n- next on the podcast is Yoshi's Crafted World. Yoshi's Crafted World. And then after that... Or we're going to be playing Skyrim. We're going to be doing Skyrim. And I'm not excited for that one because I, I don't like going into games never played before. But you know what? That's just all you part of You never played this one. Yeah, but I knew what to expect. It was Kingdom Hearts. I've never... I have not played an Elder Scrolls game in years. Like, it's probably been over a decade since I've played an Elder Scrolls game. I think it's going to be good then. I think it will be. No, yeah, that'll probably be good. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys go... Um, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Uh, go follow our Instagram and Facebook pages. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Zap off.